Hey readers, writers, and story lovers, my name is Hannah, I publish as H.S. Paisley, and today we're going to talk about I Wish You All the Best. So I joined this YA book club with my cousin, and I think there is a slight possibility that I don't like YA. <laughs> I mean, the first book that we read was um, The Field Guide to the North American Teenager, I'll link the review above. and. This was the second book, and spoiler alert, didn't love it. Now, uh, that's not to say I don't think it's an important book, I think it's a very important book, um, but it left me thinking, like, this community deserves more and better. But let me get into why. I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver follows this kid named Ben, who comes out to their parents as non-binary, immediately gets kicked out, moves in with their sister, and then is experiencing life as this kind of, like, half-out, still like kind of immediately back into the closet at this new school that they're at making these friends like this this non-binary kid basically we're following this kid ben's struggle as they try to accept themselves and and just like find their way which is a beautiful story and i think that this one had the potential to grab me and didn't. I also really understand that as a cisgendered woman, I, I'm i not who this book is for. I don't think that means that this book shouldn't have been done better though. And I'm gonna get a little bit into why. We meet Ben at their house right before they're about to come out to their parents. And it's sometime between Christmas and New Year's Eve. They have this family tradition where they watch a Christmas movie and Ben is hoping that their dad doesn't pick home alone again, but ends up picking Elf. So the three of them are going to watch Elf together. And it's Ben's job as, as the kid, the young one, to figure out where they're all going to watch this to stream it. So they go into their mom's bag, grab their mom's credit card to purchase this movie. While they're watching the movie, their internal monologue is, a, is like every commercial I stress out about coming out to my parents. But you just paid for the movie. Why are there commercials? And like, there's no way Will Ferrell's performance is good enough to distract you from stressing. You don't need to wait for the commercials to stress. You, sh I would assume, because I don't know, that you'd be stressing the entire time. So right away, I'm like, that's a strange continuity error that no editor or beta reader picked up. So the chapter goes on, and this is more of like a writing preference thing that I didn't really like, and maybe this is my fault as a reader. So you guys can let me know if you think this point is my fault as a reader. I didn't read what this book was about before I started listening to it. I just started listening to it. So I actually thought that they were going to come out as trans. And in the second chapter, when there's this reveal of what they're coming out as, that, that Ben is coming out as non-binary, my reaction was, oh, I guessed wrong. And immediately I'm like, that's probably not the reaction the author intended. <laughs> I don't really know where the error is there, but it felt like in chapter one, the fact that Ben was non-binary was a secret and it was like some kind of reveal that was supposed to have an emotional impact and that emotional impact just didn't land for me and I'm not sure why. Then in, in the beginning of chapter two picks up basically saying, Ben saying, it only took an hour for my life to fall apart. And then they are thinking over the coming out. And I definitely think that this was the way to write this scene, not actually writing uh, ben coming out to their parents and their parents kicking them out having them reflect on it So we would like feel the echo of emotion and I also think it was probably a very painful and, and, and hard scene to write and I, I Think that it was that part of it was handled quite well What I didn't love was that like a couple minutes in the audiobook later Ben thinks I've been crying for two hours And I'm like two hours ago you were watching elf with commercials that you paid for you weren't crying. And then the third continuity error within two chapters was Ben was kicked out of their house, no shoes, no phone, immediately kicked out. Horrible, horrible situation. I should be feeling that horror, not thinking about continuity errors, which is part of the reason why I was so frustrated with this book. Ben has no money, no phone. They magically have memorized their sister's number who they haven't talked to in 10 years. And they call her collect. And when she picks up the phone, the first thing she says is, who is this? <sighs> Yo, you just called collect. You've just accepted the charges from, some you know who it is. Why? Like, it, I was just so frustrated that in, in this book, which is the, the first book I've ever read, 
by a non-binary author, well, an out non-binary author, I guess, about a non-binary character, and I wanted to just love it. But in the first two chapters, there were three continuity errors. So I'm thinking about the editor and what a crappy job they did instead of about what's happening to this character. So that was really frustrating for me. I was really upset with things like that throughout the entire book. There were also a couple instances where I, it was kind of like, I knew this book wasn't made for me, but I really realized that this book wasn't made for me. And one of them was a scene where Ben was in therapy. So Ben gets picked up by their sister, gets enrolled in this new school, and they're living with, with the sister <laughs> named Hannah. And surprise, surprise, she was my favorite character in the book. <laughs> Hannah convinces them to go to therapy, which like that it was a fight was really frustrating for me, but I also have to check myself because my parents did a really great job making me feel safe about going to, to therapy. And, and that therapy was a good thing. And I understand that not, not everybody's experience is that. So that, that thing frustrated me about Ben as a character was more of a reflection of me than, than the author of the character. But in the therapy scene, in the first therapy scene, oh my gosh, it was dragging, it was dragging. They were talking about consent. They were talking about like what they do in therapy, what the point. And I was like, oh my gosh, when is this chapter going to end? And then it clicked. I was like, oh, right. I like therapy and I'm in therapy all the time. I don't need to be convinced that therapy is safe this book is not for me. <laughs> so unfortunately, after the continuity errors in the beginning of the book, like I was kind of on the lookout for those things. And that's not really a way that you want to be reading a book. So for me, like those pieces of it overwhelmed the story. And I almost wasn't even able to really enjoy the book because of, of all of the strange errors that were in it. For, for another example of this was, so Ben goes to this new school. Ben is into art. They're a very good visual artist. Uh, drawing and painting, if memory serves. And they meet this kid on the first day, Nathan, this tall, good looking black kid who has long legs because in every single scene, we're told how long Nathan's legs are. Nathan is, is taking Ben on a tour, I think, or something, and they go into the art room and then the art teacher hugs Nathan, which I was like, that's kind of weird. And then the art teacher, like a week or so later, gives Ben, or maybe even the first week of school, gives Ben a spare key to the art room. I was like, that is so weird. And so uh, another, um, Ben has this best friend who is a YouTuber. Their name is Miriam, also non-binary Muslim person whose channel really helped Ben come to understand who they are and how they wish to identify and, and helped them come out. Miriam is like 24. Ben is like 16 and they're best friends, but they've never met. And Miriam is like meeting Beyonce level of celebrity on YouTube. And I just thought that was so odd because I mean, I have made friends. I, I'd like to think I have made friends through mostly my other channel because this one, most of the people I'm talking to regularly in the comment section of this channel are from my other channel. Although if you're new, welcome, thank you, comment. I'd love to chat with you. I like talking about books. But it was just odd to me, like a 16, 17 year old, let's say they were 18, even, even if they were 18, not 16. It just seemed very odd to me that Miriam, even if they were 21 or 22, who had never met Ben before would consider them a best friend. It doesn't surprise me that Ben would consider Miriam a best friend, um, but that was also very strange. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit because I've talked about this book a lot in my book club. I do have a review that's a little more composed on my Goodreads if you want to read that. But long story long, I did not feel that Ben was a likable character. I felt that they had no redeeming qualities and they treated everyone around them horribly. I felt that they were very selfish and quite oblivious to the things that are happening around them. All of that said, I am not non-binary. I have not struggled with clinical depression, which is, I think, something that they were trying to show in something that the author was trying to show in this book. I found it very odd that Nathan was so patient as a uh, senior in high school, very patient through over a month of time when Ben was very depressed that Nathan was still being a really, really good friend, even though Ben never spoke to him. You know, just small things like that I just thought were not realistic to me. And then I realized something. <laughs> this is a fantasy novel. 
And that made it make a lot of sense to me. This is a non-binary fantasy novel. It's the dream. You, you go to a new school and for no reason, the beautiful popular boy loves you. And you get along with your therapist pretty much right away. Yes, you had this horrible thing that you had to overcome, but you immediately have found this safe space and a famous YouTuber is your best friend. And I get that. I get the appeal of that. I do think my like <laughs> last continuity error thing that, that did frustrate me specifically uh, was that it, it did kind of feel like the author forgot that Nathan was black because there were two instances where there was reference to Nathan's hair that to me as a biracial person didn't track. So I'm going to tell you about them and you guys, if I have any, any uh, black or, or, or mixed people watching, you guys can tell me if you think this tracks. Ben is meeting Nathan's family. There's a line that says Nathan's mom ruffled his hair. If anybody ruffled my hair, I'd be fucking pissed. <laughs> I'd be like, please stop and leave. <laughs> and then there was another instance where Ben is not having a great day and they lay their head on Nathan's lap. Nathan is running his hands through Ben's hair and Nathan said, my mom used to do this to me. Okay. Anyways, I feel like I, like Nathan was just such a sweet and lovable character and really was not handled very well. His coming out as being bisexual was totally breezed over, but then through the lens of this being a fantasy novel for the main character and for the author, okay, nobody else matters. So it's fine that you're horrible to everybody else that you're around. This book left me with the question, is the non-binary and LGBTQ plus community so starved for representation that they don't notice that this is a poorly written, poorly edited book. Yes, the answer is yes. And I think this was a Scholastic book and Scholastic, it is your responsibility to put the right people on these kinds of projects. And this project did not have the right people. There was a line in the book where it says, please Hannah pleaded, please Hannah pleaded. What? Like, I just feel like this community deserves better. And because this is somewhat a first of its kind, and if there are other non-binary lead or non-binary written books that you think I would enjoy, please, please put them in the comment section. Let me know what they are because I want to read them. But this one, getting the publicity that it got, it, I just feel like it has a responsibility. Like the people who are involved with this project have a responsibility to this community to make this book the best it could have been. And they did not do that. I gave it two stars. I wanted to give it five stars. It has over four stars on Goodreads. I wanted to love it. Have you read it? <laughs> I feel like that was so ranty and negative. Have you guys read this book? If you have, please let me know what you think. I may or may not have been that bitter bitch who went through the Goodreads reviews and read all of the negative ones. My cousin was like, I think you went under different names and wrote all these negative reviews. I didn't, I wanted to love this book. I really, really did. Anyways, if you guys have read it, let me know what you think. If you have any other uh, non-binary authored books that you think I would enjoy, please let me know. And oh my gosh, I've been talking a lot. This review is longer. How long? Is it? 17 minutes? I'll edit it down. Longer than I thought it would be. My mouth is getting gross. I'm dehydrated. You're probably dehydrated. Go get some water because you're probably dehydrated. <laughs>